Hello YouTubers, welcome to two awesome tutorials and today we'll be running a simulation on discovery on a pipeline of different diameters for a fluid flow through the pipeline. Just to let you guys know that discovery is just used for a very simplified simulation. If you if you want to run a complex problem or a complex geometry simulation, I would recommend to use Fluent. However, in this case, we'll be running a very simplified simulation just to get some fancy results. We'll be using Discovery. It's a very quick software to run your simulation. The software uses a lot uses a lot of assumptions throughout and works on most of the default values that, that are given in this within the software that are stored within the software. So we wouldn't have to work with a lot of parameters, a lot of specifics, and we'll be able to get our results within no time. So starting off with, I would, I have my workbench opened here. This is 2023 R2 student version. And we would look into the left panel of toolbox and we would drag discovery onto our project schematic. Here we have our discovery and geometry. We'll double click onto geometry to get our discovery up and running. We'll give you a few minutes here. Once your software is up and running, I'll I'll just give a brief introduction for users who are, who are using it first time. So at the top, you can see a few tabs here. We've got design, display, measure, simulation, etc. At the bottom left, we've got a view panel where you've got different options for viewing the geometry that you have or, or the simulation you're working with. And at the left bottom, we've got the, the results for simulation where you have various different ways to, to, to view your results based on the simulation. So starting off with the first step would be to import a geometry or create one. Having no geometry, you cannot run no simulation. So what what I would do is I would import my own geometry, which I create in Autodesk. Uh, it's it's a very simple model of of pipeline with different with different diameters. However, if you would like to create your geometry here, this software is very user friendly. You could literally you could create a cylinder of different diameters and have it as your your pipeline with different diameters but i would like to use my cad software to create a geometry as it is easy for me so we would be importing a geometry to do so we'll have to main menu insert geometry and i've got my file saved as step file which is used which is used in most of the most of the softwares so it's quite straightforward thing for me click on step open so we've got our geometry imported. We'll go back to views and go for the home view as this is gonna show me my entire geometry. The easiest option, you could even go for snap view and then try to navigate around your geometry if you want to. However, this works for us for now. So as for now, if you wanted to modify your geometry that you imported, it's quite straightforward to do so as you could literally hit bow, select your more select your pipe and then drag it up or down it's it's, it's that it's straightforward but in this case we are happy with what we have we've got a pipe of 250 mil diameter at the inlet goes down to 100 and then goes back up to 250 by, uh, by using a reducer in the middle so what we're going to do now is we're going to head directly to simulation tab as we are happy with our geometry by clicking on geometry tab, you've got a few more options. As you can see here, we've got one for the internal flow. We've got the other one for the external flow. In this case, we are running a, fl a fluid flow from inside the geometry here. So we'd go for internal flow. The software, as I said before, is very user friendly. So you've got options as selecting your inlet and outlet. You would not have to create another mesh around it or another geometry as the inlet or maybe the outlet if you're doing external flow in this case as the software does it for you. So in this case, we'll simply have our geometry here and we'll click on inlet and we'll select the face that would be our our inlet. Just click here, that would be my inlet. And as of the outlet, I would click onto my outlet here. So now that we have our inlet and outlet selected, you can see that we've got a few more options under physics here. So we've got our inlet and the outlet i would set my inlet velocity as 20 meters per second and i would add as a parameter as for the 
outlet I would leave it as empty I wouldn't as set it as as my parameter since I need to figure out what the outlet velocity and pressure would be for this in this case so I would leave it as empty as for gravity if you would like to include the gravity you can literally click on include buoyancy and then add few more parameters to it but in this case we are not including gravity just to keep it simple and straightforward and as of the wall of the pipeline i have used non-slip wall which is as of default as well however you could edit it and you could maybe make it a rotating translating which would affect your fluid flow if you would go for a rotating slip wall which means that the wall is rotating and it would impact your fluid it, moving through the pipe pipeline would also rotate to some extent however we have a solid wall and we would go with no slip and as for the fluid flow inside it i will be using air so we would edit this here, we would go for gas and we would select air. I would be using default values that are given by the software as 1.16 kilo kg over meter cubed or cubic meter and the viscosity is also taken as default. If you have your own values, I, I would suggest that you use your own by creating a user defined fluid. In this case, we'll again, we'll keep it straightforward. We'll use the normal steel structural steel for our pipeline so the next step here is most of the most of the physics options are used as default in the simulation i would use as default as well just to just to keep it how it is and for as of our results i would like to get my maximum velocity and maximum pressure plots just for our reference later on and now we are ready to solve this problem. We would head to simulation, we would click on solve. So now as you can see, it's loading here. We'll wait for it until that's completed. It might take a few minutes. Again, this software is not gonna give you 100% accurate results if you are working with a complex problem. This is just used to get a simplified results as for example this problem here was quite simple and just to get our velocities at the outlet this would solve the problem now that our simulation has been completed i would like to show different things and what's happening with this simulation firstly i would like to change the view of how we are looking at our problem here just to get more understanding of the pipe here so i'm not too good at navigating through this wing panel here yeah so we would treat it as 2d from the side here sorry about that and i would set it as my home view for now so as you can see the simulation has been completed we have the inlet on the right side and outlet to the left we can see the uh, velocity table on the right we can see different velocities using the contour plot uh, with colors. The blue is the is the minimum and the red is the maximum, as is apparent on this on this chart here. So if you if you move your crosshair around the geometry, you would be able to see how the velocities are are changing. We've got 18.1 at this point, and then in the lower pipe of 100 millimeter diameter, we've got about 21 meters per second. And at the outlet, we've got about 9.8 uh, meters per second. And now, as you might you might notice that there's a bit of bit of instability in the flow. You can see the velocities in some region is higher than the other regions. This is because we're going from a smaller pipe to a higher di higher uh, diameter pipe to a bigger diameter pipe we have some vertices being created at this region which the software has shown us so we would now look into different ways to read these results that ANSYS has solved for us so the first one here is the direction flow we'll go back to our home view now we'll go for we'll disable our contour and then we'll only look in the streamlines again this is showing us from another axis so as you can see this is this is uh, I would say best 
view to look in how the vertices are created at the outlet. You can see the flow is higher at this region and then at the bottom region where, where the flow is lower is 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 traveling in circles is trying to make a sort of coming back in the opposite direction of the flow. Go back to our home view. So disabling this option, the next one is our particles, which is used for animation and it's also very user friendly and does give you a lot of a lot of interpretation of the results itself. So as you can see how the particles are moving, you could play around with the options here. As you can see the, as you can increase the size of the particles, you can increase or decrease the speed of the animation and you can also remove some particles that are in higher range or lower range. The next option we'll look at is the streamlines, which is similar to off directional field. In this, in this option, you can see the different streamlines and you can also read the results a bit more better. Now we'll go to the next one, which is the isosurface. And this tool is, allows you to look at only the region of specific velocities. So if we, if we use our 20 meters per second velocities and then hit enter, we would be able to see the regions only with 20 meters of velocities. And if we put in 100, we'd be able to see the velocities at 100 meters per second. And the next tool we have is the contours, which is the most common one. And it does give you the different colors along with the uh, with the plot here you have different options of showing the the surface display as you can see how it shows you the highest values in this region is throughout the middle and on the sides we have sort of a backflow of the fluid and the vertices being created and the last option is the vectors where it shows you the the flow of the fluid with the arrows, the, di the directional arrows, which is helpful to see in which direction the fluid is flowing. If we decrease and increase the count, as you can see how the, the velocities at the bottom of the pipe deflects to, on the pipe surface and turns back into, in the flow of direction, in the direction of flow of the fluid. So as you can see at the bottom here, we've got some animation options. As you can see, you can start and stop the animation. And this, this is basically what I wanted to show how we can use discovery to generate results really quickly. However, if you'd like to explore further options, add more specifics, the project specifics you're working on onto this problem, you could easily translate discovery simulation to fluent by clicking on this option. And this is it for this video. If this video helped you, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to awesome. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Mm -mm. Fuck this shit, I'm out. No thanks. Don't mind me. I'ma just grab my stuff and leave. Excuse me, please. Fuck this shit, I'm out.